Welcome to 2023 and to the first live show from us here at Digital DJ Tips. I'm Phil Morse and today we're looking at Serato and in particular five things that you probably didn't know, five surprising features about Serato. Now I have the Rain 4 here but Serato works with all kinds of equipment. It works with the Pioneer DJ setups that you find in Pro DJ booths in various ways, and of course, with much smaller DJ controllers, much more modest equipment, for instance, the Pioneer DJ Rev 1, which I've got here, uh, and lots and lots of other equipment. Serato is neck and neck with Rekordbox, it's the most popular DJ software in the world. So a lot of you will be using Serato, and a lot of you will know about Serato, even if you don't choose to use it. So in today's show, that's what we're talking about. We're gonna go through five things, five surprising things that maybe you didn't know about this piece of software. Now, if you're new to this, this is a live show, so if you're watching the recording, uh, you'll see interaction with our community and various other stuff going on. You're watching the recording of a live show, and these are more fun if you catch them live. So the way to catch them live is, of course, to subscribe to the channel and click the notifications so that you are told when we go live. Uh, we are Digital DJ Tips. We're the leading online DJ school and we do this every Tuesday and Thursday at 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern. We go live with a topic or just with a general Q&A. So that's what this is all about. Uh, we will go to our live chat at the end of our five things, if you like, because I want to get the, the meat of the tutorial out of the way first. And the reason we're doing this today with Serato, and the reason you'll be seeing us focusing on Serato for a lot of the coming few weeks, is that we are currently remaking our Serato Made Easy course. It's one of the most popular courses that we have here at the Digital, Digital DJ Tips DJ School, uh, but it's, uh, it's in line for a remake. So this is the Serato Made Easy course. Uh, it is being remade right now uh, and it will be relaunched as Serato 3 made easy because Serato has just reached Serato 3.0 which is really exciting it means we can include all the new features such as stems uh, how to use it with live streaming and all the kind of stuff that has been added to Serato since we made that course now if you're a current owner of that course hey it's great being a digital DJ tips student you'll get the new course completely free. So that's the way we roll here, but keep an eye out for that. It should hopefully be available by the end of February. So that's why we're talking about Serato today, because we are neck deep in Serato here at Digital DJ Tips at the moment, uh, and we are um, reminding ourselves of all the fantastic things that this piece of software does. And there is Serato in the flesh on your screen now. Right, so what are the five things that always surprise people about Serato that I want to share with you? Well, I could have had 50 things because it's quite a capable, capable piece of software, but these are kind of like things that have been added reasonably recently, so that's why you might not know about them. So the first thing is that you don't actually need to use any hardware at all to DJ with Serato nowadays. There is a feature in Serato called Serato Play, and Serato Play lets you DJ without needing to use anything at all hardware-wise. So you need to buy what's called an expansion pack to go into your Serato, and when you've got the expansion pack, it will show in the screen here where I've got Serato Play there. You turn Serato Play on, and then you get a new set of features. Now you turn them on and off at the top of the screen here with this little crossfader there. When you turn that on, you get this new bar of features here, which gives you a crossfader, filters, and low, high, and mid EQs for two channels. So you now have a full two channel DJ set up here that you can control with your mouse. Also, by plugging a splitter cable into the headphone socket on your laptop, you can enable that here in order to then use headphone monitoring and also have an output for speakers. So you can actually do everything you can do on a normal DJ setup just from your laptop. And you can also uh, assign the crossfader how you want it to control all four decks. So it's a pretty powerful little uh, add-on for Serato that allows you to fully DJ without needing to have any hardware plugged in at all. And that was always a thing with Serato. You always needed hardware. Well, you don't anymore. You buy that Serato Play add-on. Now this is a few years old now, but however, a lot of people don't know that exists. But the really cool thing about it is that it has keyboard shortcuts, and you might have seen when I clicked on the little menu there that the keyboard shortcuts a bit popped up, and that 
lets you control a lot with the keyboard and it is perfectly possible to DJ fully using just the keyboard, using loops and cues and so on. So it's quite powerful when you get under the hood of it and when you learn the keyboard shortcuts. So number one of our surprising things you may not know about Serato is that you can do a full DJ set with Serato, including headphones monitoring, all the decks, crossfader, cues, loops, and everything else just from the keyboard. No need to plug in a controller at all. Now, the next one, I have to admit, was a surprise to me because, hey, I don't get a chance to play with all the DJ software quite as much as I would like to. Uh, and I discovered this when we were researching for the remake of Serato DJ uh, Made Easy, or Serato 3 Made Easy, as the new course will be, called, will be called. And that is that you don't actually need that Serato Play add-on to use Serato with two decks uh, at all. You, there is a new feature, a new-ish, I think, uh, that's been added to Serato that means you don't need that at all. So let's go back to the software now. I'm gonna go back to my settings and I'm gonna turn off Serato Play. So this is just normal Serato we've got now. So when you plug in a controller, you get the full controller view, but when the controller is not plugged in, you get a view that looks more like the one we're looking at here. And this is the, the kind of prepare window, right? This is where you can prepare your music, you can build your playlists and do all the stuff that you normally do, add cue points, do your beat gridding. This is like, it's kind of like iTunes for DJs, right? It's a way of preparing your music. I've got it set to Tidal at the moment uh, because of course streaming services are in our DJ software nowadays, but this could be your, more likely to be your local music. But the point is, this is where you prepare your DJ sets and then when your DJ set is prepared and ready, you plug your controller in, you get the full deck view and then you're DJing with the software as a full on piece of DJ software. But in this view here, and this is a bit that I, uh, didn't really, uh, I'd probably clocked it, but I'd never really had a good look at it. You press the two deck option here. Now we have two decks in Serato and we can lay out our cue points here and we can add cues and we can DJ with this little crossfader here. We can use the sync buttons, we can use the key, we can adjust the, um, the levels and so on here. We've got all the stuff that we need to basically practice our sets. Now you can't really fully DJ in here because unlike Serato Play, you don't have your split queuing and you don't have your filters and your EQs and all that stuff, but you can practice your mixes, get your cue points in place, uh, do looping and do all the stuff that allows you to get your routines all tidied up and ready to use within Serato. So it's kind of like halfway there to being a full DJ app without having to plug in any DJ gear and it doesn't cost you anything extra. It's called um, Serato Prepare apparently. I think it's, a, it's a official name is Serato Prepare. Uh, but anyway, you just press the little number two at the top of the screen here to get it, which I didn't know. I'm happy to admit I didn't know. If only I could know everything, but I don't. So that's the second one of our five things you might not know about Serato. If you have just joined us, welcome. It's Digital DJ Tips. It's our Tuesday Tips live show with me, Phil, here in the studio. Today we're talking about five surprising things you may not know about Serato DJ software. We've already covered Serato Play and Serato Prepare, two ways to DJ without necessarily using any gear. The third thing I want to point out is that if you have your DJ gear plugged in, now this isn't actually plugged in, because that isn't pushed in. I'll push that in now. You'll see that Serato will now uh, recognize that piece of DJ gear, or at least it should. Uh, of course, it never happens when you are live on air, does it? But uh, it should recognize it. There you go, it's recognizing it now. There we go. So we've now got the full DJ software open. We've got our, we've got our, um, our two turntables here. We've got our gear all set up, and this is now working with Serato DJ. So. I'm now controlling it here and you can see on the screen, I might be able to actually put that on the screen, no I can't. Uh, so yeah, I'm now controlling it there and you can see that I've got it being controlled in the software. So this is how it should work with a DJ controller, right? Now, what normally happens here is that you have to have your speakers plugged in around the back. I've got my speakers plugged in here. This is taking the output from our DJ controller into our big speakers in the studio here. And so now I can hear that in my studio on my main studio speakers and I can plug my headphones into the headphone socket on the front of the unit and therefore also be listening, cueing and all that. So everything gets plugged into the controller, speakers and headphones. Now what if you don't want to? What if for some reason you don't want to plug your speakers into the controller? What if you want to use your laptop speakers to hear 
the music. Now you might scratch your head and say, well, why would I want to do that? But just think about it. Let's say you plug a controller in like, for instance, one of the tiny Serato controllers like one of these, right? You're on the road. You just want to practice. You just want to plug your little controller in and have a bit of fun. You plug your headphones in, fine, but you don't want to plug speakers into this as well. You'd rather just use the speakers on the laptop that you're using, right? So you can see that there are times when you would want to use your laptop speakers. But also, let's say you've got a studio set up and you've got a really cool sound, ca sound card plugged into your laptop plugged into big speakers and you want to plug a DJ controller in and you want to be able to hear your DJ controller through that sound card and those speakers via the laptop. You don't want to have to unplug stuff and plug it into the, into the controller. Well, there's a way of doing that. So in your settings, you head to audio settings and you click use laptop speakers here. And that will output to whatever the default audio device is that's set in your laptop. So it could be your laptop's speakers but it could be an external sound card plugged into really good speakers. Either way, it will send it to there as well as sending it to the back of the DJ gear. It won't turn it off here, but it will send it to your laptop as well. And that's something which never used to be in Serato. And it's quite useful to have that uh, because, hey, all the reasons that I just shared. But it is even better than that because you can still plug your headphones into your DJ controller. So, you can still do everything on your DJ controller as if your speakers were plugged into the DJ controller. Your headphones can be plugged into the front of your controller. You're still monitoring everything on your headphones just like you normally would, but it's using your laptops as the master output. So a uh, nice way of doing that. And it's only available when you've got the controller plugged in. You wouldn't see that on the menu otherwise. But there's a fourth thing, and you might have seen it if you are eagle-eyed when you uh, saw that screen that I was just on there. Underneath use laptop speakers, there is another audio option called make audio available to other applications. Now, this is a way of doing a couple of really useful things. So let's run through a couple of scenarios where making audio available to other applications might be a really good idea. Now, imagine that you were, were hitting record in Serato in order to record your DJ set, right? And you switch to Tidal, Beatport, BeatSource, SoundCloud because you want to use a streaming service. The minute you do that, it's going to say to you, you can't use this streaming service unless you hit stop on the recording. And if you are using a streaming service and you hit record, it will say you cannot record until you stop using a streaming service. So why don't the two go together? Because of the licensing that Serato needs to sign up to in order to put streaming services into its software. The streaming services don't want you streaming a load of their music into Serato and recording it all, basically. So you can't record your DJ sets. Now, you want to record your DJ sets. You want to have sets that you can listen back to and see how you could improve and share and so on. So how do you do it? Well, you need to record your DJ sets in another app. So one app that we always um, always uh, recommend that you use here is an app called Audacity. Now Audacity is a free app that you can use to record your DJ sets. Uh, it's a very, very simple app. This is what it looks like before you've got anything open or into it. And you can select where you want to record from here. Now, in order to get your Serato to show here, you need to have Serato set up in such a way that it will say Serato. And you can select Serato, hit record on this external app, and it will record everything your Serato is doing. And the way you do that is by clicking this make audio available to other applications here. And that will allow you to see Serato in, for instance, Audacity, which I've got open here, but anything that can record, you could just use QuickTime or whatever to record your DJ sets. You need to click there. There is a little bit of software. There's a couple of hoops you need to jump through to make that work. But once you've done that, you can record Serato in anything, which is pretty cool. And a lot of people don't know that you can do that, but think on. Once you've done that, you can also make Serato available in OBS or any live streaming software. And that means that your audio from your DJ gear will go pristine, high quality, straight into your live streaming software. And then you've got a great audio half of your live stream if you want to live stream direct from Serato. So for both those reasons, recording your sets if you're using streaming services or getting your music into a live streaming app like OBS, which is the one that most people use for live streaming, not least because just like Audacity, which I just showed you, it's free, you can now do that really easily. And the final thing 
while we're on the subject of live streaming that I think is really cool that I'd like to share with you, uh, again, is on that screen there. And that is that now Serato can send your live stream song info directly to Twitch. So if you're live streaming on Twitch, and if you're not, you should be because it's where DJs tend to do their live streaming, you can send the information of the song you're currently playing to Twitch. And it does that by using the history feature in your DJ software here, which is history of what you are playing uh, currently is all recorded in your DJ software. That's what the history tab is. And it will send that information so that you can then have that showing to your community and to your listeners and to your viewers on Twitch, which is really cool. And if you've seen DJs doing that and you wondered how they did it, that's how. So there's five surprising things that maybe you didn't know about Serato DJ software. Uh, there is a full expansion pack called Serato Play that lets you do everything, or nearly everything you can do with a DJ controller, but just on the keyboard, using keyboard shortcuts, using crossfader, filters, EQs, and all that kind of thing, uh, directly from your laptop, no need to plug in any controller. There is even a version of that in the prepare window, in the offline mode on Serato, when you haven't got a controller plugged in so that you can at least practice your mixes ahead of time. Uh, you can use your laptop's speakers now with Serato or indeed any audio interface you've got plugged in, uh, assuming you have a piece of hardware plugged in, that is. And also, you can still monitor using your hardware's headphones output. Pretty cool. And you can also make your audio available to other things such as OBS and Audacity. And finally, you can send song info directly to Twitch so that Twitch viewers can see what it is you're playing without you having to tell them or find any other workaround to do that. And that works from the history feature inside Serato. Right, they're the five things that I wanted to share with you today that we were actually just talking about as part of preparing for the remake of our Serato course, which is coming out in just a couple of months. Serato DJ Pro Made Easy is the current course we have for Serato, which is pretty up to date, but we're remaking the whole thing from the ground up. It will be called Serato 3 Made Easy. It's coming in about six to seven weeks time, we hope. Certainly you'll be hearing a lot more about it uh, in a few weeks as we get ready to launch it. And if you're a current Serato Made Easy owner, you need do nothing. You will get the whole new course completely free. It's one of our most popular courses, so we're really excited to be remaking it and giving some love to Serato. And you'll be hearing a lot about Serato, Serato hardware, software integrations, and so on over the coming weeks as we make lots of free training as well around this subject. So if you're a Serato user, Digital DJ Tips is going to be a place to be for you. And by the way, if you're not, we've got a whole record box remake coming later in the year uh, as well. So look forward to that, plus other stuff too. Right, okay, we are done as far as the structured part of today's training goes. But as always, my best part, the thing I like the most uh, about being here is being able to share your comments uh, live because lots and lots of you like to ask stuff about how we're doing, uh, about uh, you know, general stuff. Uh, and I always say come on a Thursday for the general stuff. We try to stick to comments uh, on this subject on a Tuesday. Uh, but now we go to the live comments and see uh, what you got to say. Now, strangely enough, it seems like I've only got the comments from Twitch coming in, which is uh, unusual. But so we'll deal with a couple of comments from Twitch. Then I'll run over to our YouTube page uh, and I'll grab them from YouTube and Facebook. For some reason, the, the program is not putting them in from YouTube and Facebook today. Uh, but hey, this stuff happens. So are you guys, says DJ Vinyl Touch, going to remake the virtual DJ course at any point? It's on our possible list. We did have a virtual DJ made easy course uh, and it is on our possible list to remake that. Funnily enough, Virtual DJ does such a good job itself with its VDJpedia and its community of basically um, keeping its users up to speed with how to get the most out of its software that we found of all the major platforms, that was the one where our help was needed the least. So, uh, so that's why it's kind of like a little bit lower on our priority list. But thanks for asking that DJ Vinyl Touch. Um, Richard Daly uh, says, great news about the course update. I was just looking at the lessons covering Serato's effects last night, and it's great that you're remaking it. Well, we're very pleased to remake it for you there, Richard, so thank you for that. I'm just gonna go jump to our YouTube then uh, in order to uh, grab the comments from there, because as I said, they're not coming through live for some strange reason. So I will, uh, 
I'll do it the old fashioned way and go straight to YouTube and grab them from here. So where is our, uh, where is our live YouTube comments? Here we go. Jump into the channel now as we speak. It's all loading right now. So live, here we go. Five Serato features you probably didn't know existed. Oh look, there's me talking. That's me chatting away. Right, I've got the comments live. Here we go. They're all here on the uh, side of the screen here. I paused myself, by the way, so that I didn't, uh, <laughs> so that I didn't uh, confuse you and me by hearing my own voice a few minutes later. Uh, right, so let's get to some of these comments then and some of these questions about Serato. Uh, right, so DJ Dash Kenya says, I've got a problem with Serato Play. It doesn't do the actions instantly. There's always a noticeable delay when you try and do anything with it. Interesting, DJ Dash Kenya. Uh, I think it's probably to do with the power of your computer or the the fact that you maybe have the buffer size set a little bit too ambitiously. So if you head over to here, the USB buffer latency and change this setting a bit higher uh, to maybe 10 or even 20, uh, that might just make it all run a little bit more smoothly. You could also on the display turn off the uh, high res. Uh, the high res will give you a nicer looking layout but at the expense of some processor power. So you can turn off the uh, high res display here, uh, which would maybe make it a little bit more useful uh, for a low powered computer. There's high res display there that I'm just kind of moving the mouse over. So turning that off might make it easier for you. We have it turned off here because uh, this computer doesn't like it when we're live streaming and doing all that stuff at the same time. So that could be a way of getting around that. So try those things. Uh, also the Serato forum is a really good place on the Serato uh, website, serato.com slash forum. Uh, and you might find someone there who's gone through the same thing uh, and who can maybe help you a bit more there. Uh, right, so Sean says, your Rock the Dance Floor book, which uh, <laughs> I will hold up for those of you that haven't seen our book, uh, your Rock the Dance Floor book is brilliant. I have the audio version from Audible. It's the best £10 I've ever spent. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you very much, Sean. I'm glad that you found the book useful. Yes, our book is on Audible, Kindle, and in all good bookstores. So if you'd like an intro to DJing, uh, go grab it. It's uh, the most popular book on Amazon on how to DJ. Uh, right, if I delete my crates from Serato, will it also delete it out of my hard drive. Uh, no, it won't, Miguel. Your crates do not contain any music. In Serato, your crates are just a bunch of shortcuts to your music. So let's say your music is on your My Music uh, folder in your hard drive, right? Every hard drive has got a music on Windows or My Music on uh, Apple folder, or is it the other way around? Anyway, your music's physically there on your hard drive. When you import your music to Serato and you make crates and playlists and all that kind of thing, Serato simply says, okay, in this crate, this user has put 10 tracks and these tracks are here, here, here. And it kind of references them. It puts a bookmark to your hard drive. If you delete that crate, it will never, ever delete the music itself. Just your crate in Serato that says, I want to put these tracks in one place. So your music is completely safe when you start doing deleting and stuff like that in Serato. Uh, I need to look at your courses as I've just bought my first EJ controller, says Roger. Uh, so that's cool. The Ruckus is telling us that um, OBS, which we were talking about, has been upgraded to OBS 29 just now. So thank you for that piece of info. Um, so uh, Fabian is saying thank you for a response I gave to him uh, about DJ software over in one of our courses today. Yep. Yeah. Every morning I get in there and I, I answer all the questions that are piled into our courses overnight, of which there's always a lot. So uh, you're very welcome, Fabian. Um, I'm glad to have helped you. Uh, right, more people talking about Serato uh, features. David has the original Numark NS7 got the updated Serato. I think it'll work with the updated Serato, but I don't know for sure. There is a list on the Serato website of compatibilities, so you could go check there. Um, right, uh, we'll take one or two more live questions here about Serato, and then I'm gonna get out of here because, hey, I've gotta get back to recording the course. Uh, it's great to see everyone, by the way. There's so many people here uh, for the uh, first time, newbies, obviously, but also a lot of regulars. You don't like my music, GM, The Ruckus, David, uh, Robert, uh, good to see you all. All the, all the usual names of Mixmaster G, of course, uh, and a happy 2023 to you. I'll tell you what we'll do, we will jump over to our Facebook as well, if I can get it to load, because sometimes it says, uh, I don't recognize you. 
you've been away for Christmas, uh, get your phone out, log in and all this stuff. If that happens, sorry Facebook people, I won't be able to chat to you today about this. But if it doesn't happen, uh, I'll be able to hopefully pull your uh, comments in. Uh, oh, in fact, I can see your comments from Facebook. So uh, if you are there on Facebook, I'll just run through one or two of your questions on Serato now. Uh, so Spider J Hamilton on Facebook says, in light of updating your video on Serato 3, uh, will there be an accompanying Rain 4 video like what was done for the Pioneer DDJ 1000 hardware? In other words, an accompanying course to talk you through how to use this incredible piece of hardware. We'll probably just do a free guide to this at some point. We probably won't sell a guide to this. Um, I'll just do a, one of those two hour videos where I just talk through every button. Um, it's certainly it's something I would love to do, but whether I get time to do that or not depends mainly upon how well the, uh, you know, how well the, uh, <laughs> the filming goes. Hello to Lou uh, over on, Sarah, uh, over on, uh, on uh, Facebook, who says, good morning and happy new year. Same to you, Lou. Uh, and yeah, these comments are struggling. It's, it's, I'm finding it hard to pull the comments up because of, uh, well, because of, uh, because of the main software going a little bit do lally. Um, so uh, I haven't been able to answer everyone who is asking stuff on Facebook, but hey, at least I got to a couple of you people. A couple of things to tell you, a little bit of housekeeping. If you haven't entered the Digital DJ Tips Census or taken the Digital DJ Tips Census, you literally have uh, a few days to do so because it closes towards the end of this week. Now, every year we run a census, which is all about getting your views on the DJ world. Uh, but here's the census. You simply go through, you fill in all these questions. When you do so, you will be entered into a free prize draw to win a Rain 1, with speakers and headphones to win uh, a full studio setup from Focusrite Innovation, to win a Denon DJ SC Live 4, which is an incredible prize, and other stuff too. We've got four great prizes based around Scratch DJing, Pioneer DJ has given us an XDJ XZ uh, to give away uh, for aspiring club DJs and mobile and live streaming party DJs and producers. There's four big packages of which I've just named a couple of them, uh, all of which are available uh, when you enter the free prize draw and there they all are on the screen there, cycling through on the screen there. So go to digitaldjtips.com, click on any of those banners and take the census. Not only will your views then be shared with the industry and with us about your DJ, your music, your equipment, your aspirations, which will help us to make better products for you and also help our partners to make better products for you. But you'll get an entry into the draw to win one of these amazing prizes by our uh, fantastic partners this time around. Nearly $15,000 worth of kit there available. So look, it's really worth entering. If you haven't entered already, go to digitaldjtips.com and click on any of those links to do so. You literally have a couple of days left to do that. So apart from that, if you are interested in learning to DJ with Serato, watch out for the new Serato course coming soon. You can buy the old one because as soon as the new one's ready, we'll just upgrade you to the new one uh, automatically and instantly, uh, including everyone who's bought it at any time in the past. You always have the most up-to-date version of this stuff. That's the way we roll here at Digital DJ Tips. It's been a pleasure. Coming back for 2023 uh, with our first live stream. That's it. We've uh, we've kind of like broken the duck now. We're into it. Uh, the first of obviously hundreds of live streams as we do every year uh, has now happened. So whatever you're planning for 2023 for your DJing, let us be a part of it with you as the world's leading DJ school. Uh, all that's left is for me here in the studio to say, get good, get out there, make the moments, and I'll see you again on another live stream very soon. Till then, bye bye for now.